Hello, YouTube Sidekick here with another installment of the Iron Bomber's Guide to the Galaxy. Today we're starting a little series on dropping bombs on people while flying low and fast. I call it Rolling Snake Eyes, after the nickname of the high drag versions of the Mark 80 series slick bombs that are usually referred to as Snake Eyes. Today we're going to introduce the topic by comparing this low level bombing technique with the dive bombing techniques that we've already discussed on this channel. We'll take a look at the factors that affect the accuracy of a low-level bombing run, and then we'll go out to the range and do some practice runs. So, let's get started. First of all, let's go back and remember what a standard dive bombing attack looks like. If you haven't seen the earlier videos on this topic, I'd encourage you to go back and take a look at some of them. In a standard dive bombing attack, we dive at a constant angle. We pick an aim off mark beyond the target as a reference. As we do this, the bomb impact point moves up to the target. And when we think it's over the target, we release and pull up. Generally, we'll be well above the target at that point. We often use this attack because it allows us to have a good view of the target throughout the entire attack. And it also allows us plenty of time to set up. However, it can be a little dangerous depending on the nature of the threat in the area, and without bombing aids, it can be difficult to achieve accurate results, and especially hard the higher our pull-up altitude is. An alternative approach that would solve some of the threat issues would be uh, to fly only at low altitude, so approach the target at very low altitude and high speed. In this approach, we essentially fly right over the target and release our bombs as we pass over. The difficulty with this approach is that with standard low drag bombs, we can't get too low without including um, ourselves in the target area, and that would have unfortunate effects. So the alternative is to use high drag bombs. These bombs have fins that extend when they are dropped, effectively slowing them down so that they fall behind the aircraft. So again, we're going to use a low level high speed approach with these bombs. Our technique for hitting the target is pretty simple. Since we know the aerodynamics of the bomb and we know how fast we're going and how high we are, we can estimate its trajectory. And then from the cockpit, we pick a sight angle uh, that basically intersects with the expected impact point on the ground. Uh, as we fly towards the target, we wait until the sight location crosses the target and we release the bomb. Pretty simple. But let's take a look at what could possibly go wrong. Uh, the first error is that we could be at the wrong altitude. Now remember that the sight line we are using is based on expecting to be at a certain altitude. In this example here, the pilot is high, but he's using the sight line that assumes the ground is where the green line is. Because of this, he misjudges the drop point and he drops way too early. In fact, notice in this example that the amount by which he misses the target is actually quite a bit greater than the error in his altitude. So this could be important because if we're trying to say get within maybe 25 meters of a target or so, we may need to have our altitude accurate to within the same amount, so 75 feet or so. The second possible error is using the wrong speed. In this example here, the pilot is using a sight line based on his plan speed. But let's say he's tra traveling a lot slower, meaning that the bomb's trajectory is different than he expected. And once again, he'll release too early. Now, the final error that we can make is if we're not flying level when we release the bomb. So once again, let's assume the pilot is assuming that we're flying level and he uses a sight angle that assumes that. But if the aircraft is not level, or in particular, if the aircraft is G-loaded, meaning it's being pulled up, the sight angle will be wrong, and once again, the bomb will miss the target. Now, there's actually one other error that we could mention, uh, although it's pretty obvious, and that is that the pilot could release at the wrong time. Like I said, that seems pretty obvious, but there is a point in mentioning it. Because, as we'll see on the range, um, it does play a role in level bombing attacks because, unlike dive bombing, our visibility to the target is often kind of poor and our speed is very fast. So, judging the release point is actually not trivial. But let's go out to the range and take a look. Okay, here we are headed for the iron bombing test range in our trusty AV-8B Harrier. First thing I'm doing is 
setting the min and altitude to 100 feet so we don't have it yelling at us. We're getting fenced in. Really important to select the high drag version of the bombs. I recorded this mission entirely once uh, with the low drag versions. Didn't even realize it until I was looking at the video. So definitely want the high drag versions. Okay, we're nearly ready. So I'm just I decided to use the Harrier for this first round because it's really helpful to have both the HUD and the CCIP pipper when we're trying to figure out exactly how this stuff works. Uh, in the next episode in this series, we're going to take the A4 out uh, using the stuff that we learned today in the Harrier. But having the stuff on screen with the Harrier just makes it a whole lot easier to actually see what's going on. So the first thing that we're finding out here is that uh, the approach is kind of different. We have to get down low well in advance of the target. So I'm basically keeping the target at the top of the cockpit, just under the, the rim there, until I get down below a thousand feet. And now I'm going to pull up. We're going to try and do this approach at around 400 feet and around 500 knots. And of course, we have the CCIP pipper, so we don't have to guess. But we do want to try and use that as our baseline, because then we're going to do some more runs see how they're different. So here we go, getting lined up, and just freeze it right there. Okay, so speed a little over 500, altitude 400, and at that we've got a pipper that's about 8 degrees down, and we drop the bombs. And that's pretty good. So, you know, I noticed uh, it's important to notice where the pipper was because, for instance, if we were in a plane that did not have a CCIP on screen, we'd be using a value of the pipper that we calculated before we flew. So when we go out in the A4 next time, we're going to have a depression on the site, and that's what we're going to use to drop the bomb. So uh, this time for uh, an approach that we're going to call standard, 400 feet, 500 knots, uh, where we're looking at about 8 degrees, which is round about 150 mils if it was on site. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to try slightly different parameters and we're just going to show how much that changes the actual site picture. Um, so we get a picture of just how accurate we're going to have to be when we don't have the aircraft actually telling us where to drop the bombs. So we're going around again. This time we're going to go in high. So. Instead of going in at 400 feet, we're going to go in at around 500 feet. We're going to see how much different that actually makes the site picture so we can get a handle on just how accurate our altitude is going to have to be when we're using uh, a constant site depression rather than having the airplane tell us when to drop the bomb. So here we go. Okay, we're getting ready to roll in again. Now, notice that the roll in is similar to the dive bombing attack. We're putting the lift vector, that is the top of the cockpit, is aiming at the target and we're pulling around but this time instead of actually putting our little flight path livet over the target we're trying to keep the target near the top of the cockpit with the flight path vector directly underneath it sometimes that needs a little bit of fiddling uh, and you can see it's a little hard to keep that target in view and then we're starting to level out we really want to start pulling up below about 1500 don't want to be too early Again, this is going to be a lot more difficult in an aircraft that doesn't have a HUD. So we need to learn how to be smooth doing this. Okay, there we are. We're around 500 feet. We're holding that 500 knots. Going to bump up the power a little bit here. 500 feet, 500 knots. And freeze it there. Okay, 500 knots. Okay, 470 feet. Now this time, though, the pipper's at 10 degrees, and take a look at that red arrow. That's where 8 degrees would have been. That's where we would have dropped the bombs if we didn't have CCIP counting the differences. Uh, in fact, we would have missed the target. So that's just to point out that you have to be really careful about your attack parameters. They really do make a difference in where the bombs are going to go. So uh, only 70 feet different in altitude, we probably would have missed the target by 30, maybe even 50 meters. So um, we're going to have to, when we do this in the A4, we're going to have to come up with some method for flying very accurate altitudes. Okay. 
Okay, going around again. This time, we're going to go back to 400 feet, but we're going to fly slower. So I'm going to try and pull the power back and fly much slower, but at around 400 feet, and we'll see how that changes the sight picture. So as I said in the next uh, the next part of this series, we're going to go out and do this, but we're going to do it with the A4, which isn't going to have a HUD, obviously. It's not going to have the CCIP pipper, so we're going to have to pick a sight angle based on the parameters that we decide as our standard parameters, and then we're going to try and have to fly those rather than having the airplane make allowances for uh, or not flying them exactly, which is what the hair is obviously allowing us to do. Okay, here we go, rolling in again. Well, that flight, that lift vector up, the target in the top, all around. We're going to need to dive a little bit more, but here I'm trying not to dive too steeply, gain too much speed. We're going to try and hit this one at around 400 knots and 400 feet. Again, you got to leave it in the dive, hold your breath a little bit, pull up at around 1,200,000 feet or so, okay, a little bit under 400, get up to 400, pull back the power, keep the speed coming down, look over the nose there, around 400, 400, around 400, 400. Just wait until it's almost off screen there and freeze it. And again, so a little bit higher than 400 feet, 400 knots. But look at this, we're at 11 degrees. And again, look at where 8 degrees, our original sight picture, would have been well off the target. Well off the target. So if we had used our original sight picture, we wouldn't have come anywhere close to hitting the target. And that was just by changing our speed by, well, it was 120 knots, so it's appreciable. Uh, but again, probably more than 50 meters, maybe even 60, 65 meters. So again, we're going to have to be really careful when we're flying in the A4 um, that we pick a speed and that we hit that speed every time when we're dropping the bombs. Okay, so for the last one, this time uh, we'll go out and we'll try to do non-level approach. So what we try to do is I'm going to go in really low and then just before I pickle I'm going to start pulling back. And uh, we'll take a look at what that does to the CCIP pipper line. Okay, here we go. Tour of our Harrier there. Alright. Pulling up, pulling in, Okay, here we go. Get lined up on the target. Roll out with the flight path vector underneath it. Pull the nose down so that it's at the top of the cockpit. Fly down smooth. Hold your breath as you get down under 2,000 feet. And don't pull up too early. There we go. Now we're going really low this time. I'm going to try and get down under. 300 feet so I have room to pull up. If you try to pull up when you're too high, you can't even drop the bombs. So the pivot won't stay on screen. So there we are. 300 feet. We're going really fast. And as we get close here, just a second, I'm going to start to pull right now. Slow it down. I'm pulling back. Watch how the flight path vector goes up. The pipper hardly moves at all. Look how much longer that line was. When we were doing. So again, if we were thinking that we were going to use a constant value for the sight angle and then we yanked on the stick, we didn't even yank on the stick, we pull even gently on the stick as we're about to release, it's going to really mess up the game. So in high drag bombing, as in so many other things in life, it really does pay uh, to keep uh, from pulling too much in your own stick. So that's going to do it for this part of rolling snake eyes. I think we've got at least one more to do. Uh, where we'll go out in the A4 without all of the uh, fancy aids that the Harrier gives us and see how we do uh, when we just have to fly the aircraft precisely. That'll be interesting. 
Please remember to uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see them keep coming. For now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.